All right, we're joined by Rodney Childers from the number four Jimmy John's Ford team, the winning team of the Monster Energy NASCAR All-Star Race. Um, Rodney, just like walk us through today with what happened with practice and getting used to this package and then just storming to the front. Yeah, I felt like our car was uh, was really good um, on Friday. And I uh, wasn't sure if I really wanted to practice this morning or not. Um, we didn't bring a backup car over here at all. And uh, if we would have tore it up this morning, we probably wouldn't have raced tonight. So, um, you know, it was one of those deals where we just tried to go out there and practice this morning, play it really, really safe, uh, but also try to figure out, you know, what the car was doing, what our tire wears look like, uh, how much tape we could have on the grill, and, and all those things. But, um, you know, I felt like we had a good car going into the race. We were able to, to lead a lot of that first stage. Um, we had, uh, the tire get hung up in the, the fender on the left front on that first stop and lost some track position and was hard to, uh, to fight back from that. And, um, just really wasn't going anywhere much at all and, um, felt like we had to do something different. So that's when we chose to, uh, you know, pit out a sequence and, and, uh, come from the back. And, and I really think that that, you know, you know, turned things around for us and, and put us in a better position to win the race. And you guys are getting this question every week, but just how locked in are you and what's going on to contribute to all this? Well, I think it comes from uh, just everybody involved. Um, it doesn't matter uh, who it is. You know, it's it's Kevin, it's the race team, it's everybody at Stuart Haas Racing, it's everybody at the engine shop, everybody at Ford Performance. Um, everybody is just focused right now. They're working hard. Uh, it doesn't matter what kind of racetrack it is, what kind of package it is. We're going to give it 100% and, and come out and try to win races, and uh, everybody's doing a really good job with that. And I don't know if you've noticed, but Kevin Harvick's joined us, the winner of the Monster Energy NASCAR All-Star Race. Kevin, when Joey was behind you and giving you that shove, was there any doubt that you weren't going to beat Suarez to that line? Well, you never know. You know, it was uh, pretty squirrely coming off a of turn two there, and he, I, I could tell that he wasn't going to let off the gas, and I didn't want him to let off the gas. And, you know, that was the reason that we chose the outside lane. You know, we really thought that if his car wasn't torn up too bad that he would he would be the best pusher. Usually every week he's the best pusher on, on restarts and, and makes a lot of hay on, on those restarts. So, um, you know, he pushed us off a of turn two, and the key was just um, – you know, being able to clear those guys by the time we got to turn three, and even if we didn't, I didn't, I didn't really think that we were capable of driving on the bottom with somebody tucked up right against the right side of our car. Our car was super fast, uh, but you know, really edgy and and uh, in the wrong position would would push the front tires really bad. But if it was out in the front, um, you know, it was it was lights out. So it was uh, it was definitely a, a, a very tense moment, but. Uh, we were able to get through the restarts, and, and it all worked out. Any thoughts about the million dollars yet and what you're going to do with it? Oh, man, I just like the trophy, to tell you the truth. I mean, I'll take the money for sure, but um, all the kids think it's the it's the, it's Lightning McQueen's Piston Cup. So um, I'm sure that's what mine will think about it when he wakes up and, and sees it in the morning. So it'll be, uh, you know, I think you, the, the coolest part about it is for, for me, it's it's really, I love the, I love the, the, the trophy and the money. That's great, but... Uh, seeing the effort that's paid off for the guys on, on my team and, and, you know, seeing a guy who's won a zillion races in his career with, you know, a bunch of different race teams like Doug Yates uh, walk into victory lane, that guy just absolutely loves to race. And when you put a restrictor plate on these engines, he's just a guy that he just wants to just pour every ounce of it that he's got into it. And, and so from the engine shop, at, you know, and Doug and, and all of his guys and, uh, then you look at our fab shop and, and the CFD guys and all the aero guys and everything that they put into it. And then you, you know, like Rodney said, and then you give it uh, to the four team and then they detail it out and bring it to the racetrack and, and make a lot of good decisions uh, throughout the day. So, hey, you know, everything's everything's going our way. Um, we've got really fast cars. Everybody's executing. And, you know, my, the, the pit crew didn't have a great first stop with the, with the tire getting hung in the fender, but they rebounded with a, a great pit stop on the, on the next stop and gained, you know, a spot or two there. And, and that's, that's what you want out of an experienced team, whether it's the pit crew, whether it's the crew chief, whether it's the driver. Um, when something goes wrong, you've got to be able to overcome it, refocus, and, and move forward. So I'm, I'm proud of them all. That, that, to me, is more important than, 
than the money and everything that comes with it because everybody puts so much time with it. There's nothing better than seeing them all high five each other in victory lane. And then I know it's looking ahead a little bit to next week, but if you win next week, the last driver to win three races in a row twice in a season was Dale Earnhardt in 1987. With your connection with Dale, what would that mean to you? You know, I, I think everything so far has just been, you, you kind of just have to laugh and, and, and enjoy it. And, and, and it's like I said, in Kansas, it's, it's kind of a game at this particular point because you, you know, you, you want to keep him focused on, on what he's doing. And, you know, I think, um, you know, obviously Zippy's in, in, you know, from his side of things has, has been in this position a lot, but there's a lot of things that, that people talk about, you know, stuff like that. And it's really about trying to come to the racetrack with the same mentality that you did, you know, it's, it's racing like you're losing. And, you know, if you can, if you can trick yourself into doing that every week and not get too high during the highs and, 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 you know, really feel like you need to keep pushing to, to make things better. Um, and that's really the mindset that everybody has right now. And, and they've all bought into it. And really the whole company has, has bought into it. And it's almost just like, ignore everything that's going on. You know, the cars are fast, but keep working hard to make sure that you have stuff coming down the pipe uh, to keep improving the cars because this whole garage is, is smart and, and they'll, uh, they'll keep improving. So, um, and that's, that's the great thing about it. From the day that we first came to Ford, um, it's been a constant progression. And, and you know, I see that progression as, as getting better, not worse. We're going to open up for questions. Start with Brendan. And then Bob. Hey, Kevin Brennan, Marks from Charlotte Observer. Congratulations, Thanks. first of all. Uh, you know coming into this race isn't worth any points, but how does the excitement of winning tonight compare to winning any of the five races you've already won so far this year? Is, is it similar, or uh, is, it, is it different at all, or, or what is it like? How does it compare? You know, I've, I think this was my 18th all-star race. I believe I heard that tonight. Um, and, I, you know, I'm, I was 18 and won. Uh, and you know we've we've been really close to to winning this race um, a couple times that that we've been at, at at SHR, and you know I think as as you look at it, these guys, including myself, all put a lot of effort into into coming into into this race every time we've been here. Uh, there's something about winning at Charlotte. There's something about winning the All Star race and and being able to to win on those nights where you just throw caution to the wind because you know everybody in the whole field is doing the exact same thing and they all want what you did. Um, so we're two for 18 now and, you know, I think that's, uh, that's, that's pretty neat. And, and, um, I know how, how much effort and time that, that they put into it. And, and for me, that's what, that's one of the things that, that motivates me. I, I feel like if I don't show up and give a hundred percent and I'm not a hundred percent focused, I've let them down because there's not one person in that organization that isn't given everything that they've got every day to make sure that that car is the best that it can be when it rolls out of the trailer. And, you know, if I'm not prepared and listening and, and uh, in there, you know, talking to these guys and at the meetings and doing all the things that it takes to be a part of the process. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm letting them down. So that, that motivates me to, to make sure I don't let them down. Bob Parker, CSPN, in the second and third stage is when you were in traffic. Did you, you were making moves, but I'm curious, did you feel like your moves were daring at all? Or were you trying to play conservative? And how did this race feel compared to like a Daytona or Talladega plate race? Um, it was different. You know, I think as, as you look at it, it, you know, you know, the only thing I can really compare it to is once it got all strung, strung out was Daytona of old, uh, before they, before they repaved it, when you could dive to the bottom and, you know, the, the, the middle and top was still going to be faster and coming up on the outside of you. Um, you know, I probably made a lot of moves that I shouldn't have made, but you know, you're trying to make something happen. I didn't feel like I was riding in line, and the higher that I would move up the racetrack, the tighter my car would get. Um, you know, so if I could, if I could, I could dive down to the bottom and, and make good time on the bottom. But you know, when they would all line up on the top, it would I, I wound up losing ground. So uh, really, our strong point were the restarts. Uh, we were able to push and shove, and 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 I was able to um, you know be aggressive with the car. Um, because you know the first six or eight laps, it would it would grip, and I could I could go anywhere I wanted to. But as we ran, it didn't it didn't it kept getting a little bit worse in traffic. But you needed to do everything that you could do to get to the front, and and that was really the goal at the end of that third stage was to get as far forward as possible because we knew we weren't going to pit again. We didn't have any more tires, and and we'd kind of made our bed. 
Um, but in the end, that wound up being the call that, that put us in the right position to, uh, to win the third stage and, and be able to control the race from there. Kenny, Jerry, then Don. Akeem Balaam, Concord Tribune. Um, you've had seasons in the past where, you know, you've kind of had, you know, where you've been, you know, I guess looking up at other drivers because they were on hot streaks. Right now you're on a huge hot streak, five wins, now six wins. Um, if you could take us through the perspective of, you know, once, you know, trying to get up to, you know, that level of where those drivers were and now being on this hot streak, especially going into next week at the 600 where, the field is pretty much pretty much thinking you know we gotta we gotta beat the number four he's the man to beat right now yeah you know I, and I don't feel like that's really a different position than we've been for you know in four out of the five last years um, last year was you know obviously a building year for us and I think that's the the one thing that is the the great part about this team is we've been in in a position to obviously win the championship in 2014 15 you know had a, had a great year and won a bunch of races so we've we've been in position to uh, have been successful before, and and I think that the experience of the, of the team and the organization and and all the racers that that come in um, into that shop day after day kind of sets the tone of of the expectations. But also, you know, having been in in a lot of these uh, situations before with with each other, you know, I think in our fifth year, I think that experience is is paying off and in, in really being able to capitalize on. Uh, the speed of the cars, uh, especially when you look at the when you look at the experience of the team, the the speed of the cars, and the experience of the team, I think is what is um, making everything add up to the results that we're having. Jerry Jordan kicking the tires at Net and Performance Racing Network. Um, your partner next to you there on Friday said he really kind of liked this package. I guess you've got a million reasons why you would like it right now. Uh, but what was it like on the track uh, racing it? Do you think it has potential? And also, what about the fans? Were you aware in, from the car that, you know, they were standing up and there was all these cheers and you got out of the car? It seemed pretty, uh, pretty ex a lot of excitement uh, after the race as well. Well, the fans have been great, and, and you know, I think as, as you just look at the, the momentum and, and just the, you know, everything that's, that's happened this year, the, the fans have really uh, been very supportive, and, and I think as, as you look at just the things that are happening, I, I think that, you know, that they're, I don't know, I don't, I don't know like kind of seems like they're on our side and, and rooting for us to, to be successful, and, and you can feel that enthusiasm, and, and I like that, you know, I think, I'd rather I'd rather boo me boo me to death if they don't like me and and cheer for me and and do the same for every other driver and and I think that that enthusiasm from the from the fans really sparks us as well uh, because you you know you can you can feel it and, and you can see it and um, coming to the green flag you don't, it's not that you don't notice all those light, those flash bulbs that are that are going off on on phones and cameras and and all those things as far as as far as the package goes um, you know I'd I'd really like to make sure that we don't just jump and say, you know, this is this is the save all, do all uh, package. I, I'd like to see it, you know, slowly transformed into points paying races because I think the preparation level will be a little bit different from every team in the garage. And I just want to make sure that that um, we cycle it in correctly and make sure it fits in well for the teams to be able to um, afford the things that, that need to be done to, um, you know, get the cars right. So there's there's a lot of things to, to balance. You know, tonight's race was was very aggressive, and, and this is the the perfect spot to try stuff like this. And, you know, I think as, as you look at, um, you know, the, the effort that the teams put in to, to make all this happen was, was pretty high. Um, and the chance that, that NASCAR and Marcus and all everybody took to, to put it, this into the, into the all-star race is – is brave, um, bold, but you know I think the, that when you look at NASCAR racing in, in five years, I think you'll look back at tonight and say it looks like this, and it all started here. Kevin uh, Don Jeffries from CSPN Media, um, you were one of the only cars who could actually get up to uh, the leader and make a pass on him. So just kind of walk me through that last lap in stage three, uh, where you got around uh, Larson to uh, you know put you out front for stage four. I'll be honest with you. It was kind of like uh, I heard I heard one of our golfers say this. Uh, Chess and Hadley said this. He's like it was kind of one of those blackout moments. 
uh, that they, everything just happened, and, and the next thing I knew, I was on the outside or inside. I don't even know. I don't even remember how I got by. There was two or three passes that happened there, and I had a big uh, head of steam and, and was able to, I think it was the 19 car, yeah, um, and was able to get up beside the 19 car and, and drive by. So it was, uh, there was just a, a lot of moving and shaking and, and uh, bumping and, and a lot of momentum that, that, that we had and we needed to, to go somewhere. But I, I, I really felt like that we had to be really aggressive to get as far forward as we could. I'll be, I'll, honestly, I didn't think there was any way we were going to win that stage. Um, but getting all the way up in front at the end of that stage really put us in con control of the race. And I felt like if once if we were able to get back in control of the race and if we were able to keep the clean air, uh, that was really the, the, the best chance we had to win. Uh, traffic was we weren't going to make another pass. That was the moment that, that won us the race. Any questions for Rodney or Greg? If not, we'll let them go. Caleb? Bob? And then Jacob? Caleb Whistler, Kick on the Tires of the Net. Ronnie, this is for you. Kind of what were some of the strengths and weaknesses you saw for your team with this package, and how much did the lack of practice affect your efforts in this package? Well, I think uh, I think it ended up being enough practice, to be honest. I think everybody at the racetrack and, and NASCAR did a, an awesome job of getting us out there. Um, you know, I think all of us, you know, sitting in the trailers probably thought we weren't going to qualify yes, yesterday and, and uh, thought we weren't going to practice anymore either. So, um, you know, we were pretty nervous from um, a lot of different things, just not knowing what, what was going to happen if we didn't practice anymore. But, um, you know, we just felt like our car was fast. Um, you know, we, we weren't sure if it was going to handle the best in the world. Uh, it was a little bit too tight in practice. Then we got it too loose and then got it too tight again. So, um, but no matter the balance, it had a, it had a lot of speed. So uh, that was a, a big positive. Bob Hawker, ESPN for Greg. If NASCAR wants to try to use the, some sort of this package or a form of it, how many more, how many tests would you want to see before they make that decision? And kind of how many aero packages can a team, can organization deal with for a season? Like if they, you know, if they have this for like six or seven races and the other package for, you know, the other non-plate races and then plate package, is that doable from a race team standpoint? I mean, I think it's doable. It's just a matter, of, like back to what Kevin said, is is implementing it the right way, um, learning it. it it's going to be different than our other packages. It, it's it's a motor package. It's a you know potentially a body um, change from what we race uh, on downforce racetrack. So you know we're just creating more work for ourselves, um, which just takes more resources. Um, if it puts good, good racing on, um, and the races are spread out. Um, you know, we'll, we'll all figure it out as teams. Um, you know, dumping it on us right now wouldn't, wouldn't be the right thing to do. Um, it, it would be nice to go to another racetrack, you know. You know, I, everybody's talked about the Pocono or the, uh, you know, Michigan is probably a really cool place to, something like that, to have tried it. Um, and I think we'll see different results at different racetracks with it. Yeah, and I think the other thing that's going to happen this year is you're going to see that this particular package also – show up on the Xfinity cars at Michigan. So I think that's a I think that's another step in the in the process. And you know, I think by the time and and that's my point by taking taking our time with this is I think by the time it evolves, you know, especially for the engine shop, that this particular package would l need to look very similar to what your Daytona and, and Talladega package look like and and it would be it would be really nice for everything to evolve into a you know a you know a package like this you know wherever we're going to run it on the two miles or one and a half miles and, and daytona and talladega look the same so how you can evolve to that is way beyond me but you know i think that i think from an engine shop standpoint there would there would need to be something like that would happen so and and that's the reason that you can't just say pull the trigger let's do it and you know it's just a it's a it's a big ship to turn um, so it would it would be interesting. Anything from the press box?
Well, just remember this. There was a large buzz about the low downforce package that we currently race when we left the all-star race one year. So just remember that. All right, we'll go Jacob, then Mike. Jacob Seelman, Speed Sport. I've got one for Greg, and then I'll follow up with Kevin. Greg, you've been at this game a while, going back to your time at JGR. Have you ever in your career been with a team and in a situation quite like the run that not just Kevin, but the entire SHR group is on right now? No, it's pretty awesome. I, I don't know if many organizations at any point in time in their career have, uh, you know, had this kind of success. So, uh, you know, as a, as, a, as a group, it's it's been really cool um, to see uh, Rodney and Kevin accomplish what they have is is just been unbelievable. Kevin, for you, uh, tonight, I, I'm a little surprised to see you walk in here, honestly, and it, I don't know, I don't want to say subdued is the right word, but I, I'm is is it getting to be old hat at this point six Look, for man, thirteen? Right I got now? a I got a four month old baby at home. <laughs> I showed up this morning. I held my little girl at at mm, I don't know seven thirty eight o'clock. Uh, I drove to the racetrack. I practiced. I went back watched my son's baseball game, and I drove back for the for the drivers meeting. I had four appearances. I uh, sat and, and laid on the couch for an hour and um, watched the race, and then I, I came back out and did driver intros and ran the race. So if your You're ass wouldn't be tired by now, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know who you are, but I'm, ready to be out I'm beat. So I felt like I gave it a full effort today. <laughs> so if I'm subdued, I'm sorry. I'm really happy that we won the race, yeah. and I'm, I'm, I'm really excited for my team and organization and sponsors and everybody, but I'm tired. Got to remember, I'm old. <laughs> you know, when I leave here, I'm going to go home and it, I drink too many more of these Bush beers. I might be asleep in the car. <laughs> so, Johnny Sauter was in here last night after the truck race win and made a comment about right people, right situation, and that he felt that he was on an upswing at a period where a lot of drivers in their career might be on a downward swing. I feel like I'm seeing this a lot of the same with you. Do you feel like right now that you're just getting better and better? And is that in large part due to the fit you found with Stuart Haas? Absolutely. And I'm going to try to be more energetic now that, that, I, th that I feel like I'm subdued. Um, you know, I, I think as, as, you, as you look at situations, he's 100% he's right. Uh, and, you know, I think as, as you look at uh, getting involved with, with Tony and, and Gene, um, I've obviously known Tony for a long time. It took me a while to get to know that guy down there. He used to want to just, I think he used to want to tear my head off. I wrecked a couple of his race cars a few times and kept his driver out drinking beer too late and um, all kinds of stuff. So, um, but, you know, I think as, as we've you know, in, been embedded in, in SHR as, as a group and, and, you know, sat through good times and bad times and meetings and, um, you know, the, the thing about it for me is, I get to be involved and you know I used to it used to be an argument to speak your opinion and and you know talk about things that that weren't going wrong that were going wrong now you talk about things that were going wrong and there's an action list okay here's here's what we're going to do we're going to have a meeting and we're going to move forward and and you just for for me I like to be involved and you know they they let me be involved and and you know our team our four team in general is is a little bit different than than probably most teams because Stuart Haas Racing allowed us to build it from we didn't we didn't have anything, so we hired a crew chief. We courted Rodney for I don't know seems like a year and a half, whatever it was. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So it was it was a long time, and, and we we got that piece done first, and then it was okay. Now you need to go hire uh, everybody on your team, and and he was uh, on gardening duty, so he got to you know, go and interview uh, every person uh, that, that was on the race team to start with. We got a brand new tractor and trailer and every nut and bolts in it and every car was built to the specs that, that you know, blended together with what he wanted and what Stuart Haas had and, and you know, the Hendrick relationship at the time. So every everything on our team was built 
around what we wanted. And, you know, that's not normal. You know, I think as you look at a lot of situations, you're going to have guys that are going to go into a team and you're going to say, well, you're going to get a few of these cars, you're going to get a few of these cars, and we're going to give you a couple guys from over here. But, and that's not the case. And, and when you look at it, we've got young owners. Um, we've got a group of racers that – from top to bottom, inside and out, that, that love to race cars, and that's all they want to do. They don't want, they don't care what color your shirt is, how many buttons are on it. Um, you know, just show up and, and do everything you can to, to win the race, and and that isn't normal in in this garage. And you know, I think as you look at that environment that that has been created, it's just about racing, and it, everybody's input, everybody's everybody's involved, and and it's just a it's a special special place to work so for for me it's it's the same scenario it's the right right people right situation um and we all have a lot in common we all have kids we all are very similar in age there's not a generation gap from you know our ownership group or the management or crew chief um you know if i if i told rodney hey man i'm not going to be or, or greg i said hey man i'm not going to be at the meeting today i'm going to go watch keelan's baseball game they'd say have fun and it would be like you know what, if I'm going to watch my kid play football or baseball or basketball and, and you have the opportunity to do that, that's rare. And, you know, that's not something that we all get to do. And so that's the type of situation that, that for me, I just feel like it works. And we all respect each other, but we all have a lot in common. We're going to wrap it up with Mike and Daniel. Mike Ember, USA Today. Rodney, obviously the speeds were down quite a bit with this package and there were some other differences. How did all that impact how you thought about things like tire strategy and, and, and pit stops and stuff. Did it change that a lot or not? Yeah, I mean, when you look back at it, there's been a lot of work uh, behind the scenes. Um, you know, I think Rex blew his computer up about 10 times working on all this stuff, trying to figure out this package. And, and um, you know, is it going to be more about drag? Is it going to be more about downforce? And um, honestly, it ended up being different than what we thought. Um, you know, I told somebody in Victory Lane, I'm glad it wasn't 600 miles because we didn't need a different car. Um, but, you know, it, it was all about trying to figure out what was the right thing, and, and we brought what, what we thought was right. But, um, you know, I think the whole garage thought we were going to come over here and just run wide open for 80 laps, and it didn't end up being that way. There was a lot of handling involved, and, um, you know, once we saw how much everybody was out of the gas in, in practice, we had to rethink what we were doing, and, um he said at the same time i said it we we went out there and practiced i don't know 15 laps and we put tires on it again and just drove through everybody and then the 42 put tires on and drove through everybody and we're like crap uh you know our original thought was we were going to pit after the first stage and we were going to stay out the rest of the time uh that wasn't going to happen you're going to have to have tires so um it was a lot different than what we thought it was going to be daniel to wrap it up uh, Daniel McFadden with uh, NBC Sports. Uh, Kevin, uh, early, early this week, the, the ne this year's NASCAR Next uh, class was announced, and two drivers that you've kind of taken personal interest in, Will Rogers and uh, Hallie Deegan, were named to it. Uh, wh what was what does it mean for you, for two drivers that you take each even a small mentorship role in to have them get that recognition? Well, you know, I, I feel like our, our efforts, um, you know, from a short track side of things uh, are paying off. You know, I don't think anybody would have known Will Rogers' name uh, if, if we hadn't have run the, the K&N West Series race last year. Um, you know, and, and, you know, I'm proud to be able to, to take him and, and bring him on the radio show and talk about him. And, and that, that's really the reason that we run those races. And, and, you know, I think when we went to Bakersfield this year, uh, running around, you know, Haley is, is – she has a lot of potential. You know, and, and I talked to Brian, you know, periodically here and there, and they came to the house, and and you know, she was on the on the radio show as well, and you know, I think both of those both of those kids have have a ton of potential. I I, I hope that, and I think Brian is is really, um, you know, good for for Haley because of the fact that she just needs to go race and learn the ins and outs and get with the right you know situations as as she moves up and not move too fast because. She's the best. She's the best female. Um, she has the most potential of a female racer because she gets it. She's very into what she's doing. It's it's not about you know everything else. It's it's really about the 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 race car and how do I drive it faster and 
and she's just got her stuff together. And, and Will's Will's the same way. He's got his stuff together, and he just he just needs an opportunity, um, you know, to to come out and 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 show what he's got. So when they when when the road course stuff shows up, and and you know, Will is probably you know he's capable of of being in an, an Xfinity race or a Cup race in the, in the right equipment on a road course, and and he he'd be you know, a top 10 competitor in, in the right stuff, in the right situation on any road course in, in any series. So it's, uh, it's interesting to see, but you know, that's, that's, um, that's, that's really been our goal, uh, running the K&N races is to expose those, those drivers to, um, you know, get opportunities and, and just glad that, that it's working out for a couple of them. All right, guys, thank you for coming in.